MP to all cars. Armed robbery on security vehicles now. Four to MP. All men. Off watch. Zero one to MP. Disturbance in High Street. Gang of youths MP fighting with knives. One Request one. assistance, Ivan. Suspects on premises. And what does that leave us? Uh, quite a batch. Number one, the walk-in merchant who was seen by the cleaning lady. The description? No, it was dark and she just glimpsed him on the stairs. Yeah, it's fifth in that neighbourhood, isn't it? Show us some photos, just in case. Uh, uh, number two, the scaffolding poles taken from Wiggins. Uh, area cars have stopped four lorries with scaffolding poles, but who can tell one scaffolding pole from another? Well, Joe Wiggins thinks he can. Well, then Joe Wiggins should look for them himself. <laughs> right, keep it on top. Next. CID, Dave Brooke, who is it? It's Harry D, Mr Brook. You said to call. OK, you call. Cool. I'll something for you, Mr Brook. It's good. You sure? I won't fool around with you, Mr Brook. Can we meet? Uh, yeah, in half an hour. Where? Yeah. Same place as before. Right, thanks. Right, show the cleaning lady some likely photos and uh, if the old man asks for me, tell him I'm out for an hour. But only if he asks. Uh, where will you be? Having a walk in the park. Morning, Mr Brook. You know you like feeding ducks. Is that what they are? I thought they were penguins. You're having me on. I'll have your guts if you're wasting my time. This won't waste your time. There's a job being talked about, a big one. When? This weekend. How big? Well, I could get killed even for talking about it. OK, get killed. Tell me. A security job. Over a million pound, they say. Could do you a lot of good. You've told me nothing. There's top villains working on it. Must be worth something. I'm skint, Mr Brook. You can't come scrounging on the local nick every time you're skint, Harry. It's genuine. There's three top villains in on it. It's Ryan, Moody. Well, that's two. And Brennan. Joe Brennan? Yeah. He's inside, Harry. He's doing five. No, he's out, Mr Brook. When? A couple of days. I've seen him. He's staying with his sister. His pals met him at the gate. They had this one laid on, but they was waiting for Brennan to do the bells. Bells? You said a security van. No, a security place. If you know that much, Harry, you know more. No, Mr Brook, that's all I know, honest. Harry, you've told me who. I need to know when and where. I don't know where. Well, you'll find out. They'll kill me. If you're skint, I'll sub you. A fiver. Fiver? All right. Two fivers. But they have to bring results. When do I hear from you? Couple of days, Mr Brook. Thursday. OK. Here, you feed the ducks. They don't like the look of me. <laughs> Not surprised. Was it worth going out for? Yeah, it might be. What's been happening? I uh, showed the photos to the cleaning lady. She didn't pick anyone. Ah, oh, and the old man was looking for you. Oh, Tom. It's open. You wanted to see me, sir? You were out after something. One of my snouts wanted a word. Useful? Might be, sir. A secret, is it? No, sir. It was to say that Joe Brennan's back amongst us. Brennan? Isn't he doing... He was doing five. He was given parole. I checked. And we're the last to be told. The parole officers are told, the social workers are told, but never the police. It's to give him a chance to go straight. And how straight do we think he's going to be? Yes, Mary? The commander would like to see you, sir. When? In five minutes. Right. Oh, it's one of those days, the super, the commander, and where were we? Brennan and his parole. It seems this time he was a model prisoner. Full remission and considered suitable for parole. Living with his married sister. She's looking after him. His sister, Liz? Yeah. It's like an old pussycat looking after a wolf. But it isn't where we were. I was talking about you. You weren't out for two hours just hearing that Joe Brennan is behaving himself. Now, Dave, the order from upstairs is for cooperation. And the new commander doesn't favour loners. Now, in three minutes, I have a meeting with him. And I also have today's crime complaints looking for a desk to land on. So, if you have time to waste, Sergeant... It wasn't wasted, sir. You have two minutes to make me believe that. There's some talk of a security job this weekend. With Joe Brennan including himself in? Well, that's a story. Hmm. He'd be daft, wouldn't he, so soon? He's never kept much to the rules. Damn. Yes? It's time, Mr Roach. The commander. I'm on my way. We'll talk about this when I get back. 
So don't leave the office. And you see the collator and tell him all that you know about Brennan. Yes, sir. Did the old man tear you off a strip? Well, niggled me for some information. Did you give? Not much. Now, let's get on with the workload. The order from above, Dave, is for teamwork and cooperation. Crime information has to be shared. Not by this team. We work hard for our information, and we don't share it with the lazy so-and-sos who spend their time in the canteen. Oh, don't let the commander hear you. No, I won't. I'll give what I have to give and no more. How's our own work coming along? Uh, two on remand and eight inquiries pending. Uh, have a look. Right, I'll deal with them today. There's something for you to do, but keep it quiet. An address. A married woman lives there, Mrs Gardner. Huh? And what's her claim to fame? She's Joe Brennan's sister. Oh, is that Don't what you went... Don't shout it! I just want to know if he is living there and what company he's keeping. But it's off our ground, so be careful. Right, I know I'll have to tell some of it to the collator, but not too much. Jim Hillier. Ah, come in, Dave. What can I do for you? Well, I've come to see how the great world of criminal intelligence is operating today. In which department? Giving or taking? <laughs> well, a bit of both. Well, that's a change. Let's start with the giving. <laughs> well, it being uh, more blessed. Oh, it storeth up treasures in heaven. <laughs> I'll hold you to that. Did you know Joe Brennan's out? No. Uh, let me check. Bradley. Brennigan, really. Brennan, Joseph Arthur Brennan. No, he didn't know he's out. Does it surprise you? Ah, armed robbery, sent down for five. With his usual conduct, he wouldn't be out for another year and a half. With full remission, he'd still have six months to do. Yes, that surprises me. Given parole a week ago. Well, jails must be overcrowded. What else are you giving me? He's living with his married sister. Uh, I've got her address. Do you want it? No, no, no. Just anything you have on him? Well, let's see. Uh, four previous. This last one. Five years for his part in armed hold-up. Said to have been six-handed, but he was alone in the dock. Remind me. Factory job, for wages. The guy away with 60,000. The cashier had pushed the alarm. An area car arrived in the final minute. The getaway driver panicked a bit, and Brennan was left behind. Do you think he's come out with a grudge? Well, I think he might be owed a big favour. Do you have his uh, associates there? Uh, he doesn't have many. He's a short-tempered man. Only a handful. Two of them at large, Ryan and Moody. Were they with him on that wages job? He never said. He went down on his own. Well, then they would owe him a favour, like his share of 60,000. Uh, that would have been spent a long time ago. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Well, thanks, Jim. Dave, you sure there's nothing else? Yeah, quite sure. Thanks a lot. Yeah? Who is it? How'd it go, Max? Oh, is that Dave? Yeah. Look, it's three in the morning. I didn't get to bed until two. Is he staying with his sister? Yes. Did he go out? Look, it's a long story and I'm tired. I'll see you in the morning. Good night, Sergeant. Morning, Max. Have a good kip. Morning, Sergeant. Well... Did he go out? Only to the local for an hour. Uh, I've got it all here. Um, left his sister's house at 7.14. Arrived at the stag's head at 7.20. Left the stag's head at 8.10. Arrived back at his sister's house at 8.16. And that was that. Out only once? Yeah. And no callers? Nope. Did he speak to anyone in the pub? Oh, I just said hello to an old gaffer and a couple of old biddies. Um, who did you have in mind? Pals like uh, Terry Ryan or George Moody? No. It looked like he was being a good boy, staying home by himself. Even went down to the pub early, when it was quiet. Stood by himself at the bar, read the evening paper, chatted to the barmaid. 
and went home. Stayed home. Lights went out just after 12. Um, if you wanted exact, eight minutes past midnight. I waited an hour in case he might slip out. No movement. So I went home, and you woke me at three. Mm. Well, I want you to keep observation again tonight. In fact, today and tonight. Dave, um, this is off our ground. You should be telling the old man. Well, this one's for us. It's our information, and it stays that way. But Brennan knows me, so you'll have to go. And there's two of his pals I want you to look out for. Moody and Ryan. Yeah. This is the friend I told you about, Mr. Ryan. The friend who can help us, Eddie Ross. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Ross. You think you can help me? He works at the place, Mr. Ryan. I'm sure our friend can speak for himself, George. You work at the security office, Mr. Ross. Yeah, and since George and I are old friends, when he said you wanted a sketch of the place, I said I'd like to meet you and ask what it is you need. And to ask what it would be worth to you? Something like that. I'm sure I can be about. What do you do at the security office? I'm one of the night guards. And you'll be there if we need you? No, sir. Not if I can help it. <laughs> <laughs> Wise man. Did you hear that, George? <laughs> yes, Mr. Ryan. George, do the honours. Whiskey for me. And uh, Mr. Ross? If we're doing business, it's Eddie. OK. Eddie. What do you have? Do you have an Irish? You name it, we've got it. An Irish malt? Great. George. I heard, Mr. Ryan. Now, let's see how you can help. After that... We'll agree what it's worth. Fair enough. As you know, we're not one of the biggest security firms in the town, but we do have some very big contracts. One is for the collection and delivery of cash within a group of banks. It works like this. Eddie, we know how it works. We've been casing your place for months. On weekdays, you collect and deliver money between the banks and you hold none of it. At weekends, you do hold money at your headquarters. That's right. Normal weekends, we hold half a million, but at the end of each month, it's more like a million or more. It could make someone very rich. Eddie, you're still telling me what we know. Now, have you got anything special to offer? Yeah. Your whiskey, Eddie. Uh, thanks, George. Mr. Ryan. Cheers. So, you have something special to offer? Yeah, cheers. You know that the place is a fortress... Not to my partners, it isn't. I can make it even easier for them. I can make it safe and fast and certain. For example? I can get you a plan of the build and show them where things are kept. I can give you the guard rotors and I can be a further help. Go on. I'm listening. Two special keys are needed to get into the strong room area. I can tell you where they are. And for the strong room itself, you need the combination of the day. You know the combination? No, but I know where the code book is kept. But after the job, won't somebody say, who knew all these things, and reach out for you? It's unlikely, Mr Ryan. It's true I know where the special keys are kept, but so do others. And I don't know where the code book is kept. That's top secret, known only to four directors. But you do know. I made it my business, and it's what I'm selling. Same again, Mr. Brennan. Ah, uh, uh, no, thank you, Kitty. It's time I was getting home. Oh, I'm sorry it's so quiet. It's not often so quiet on a Wednesday. No. No friends to meet then? I have a couple of pies to take home. Yes, Mr. Brennan. Here you are, sir. Uh, thanks, Kitty. Well, I'm off. Night, night, Mr. Brennan. Liz, I'm back. Got a couple of pies for you. Ryan, what the hell are you doing here? I came to talk to you, Joe. Where's Liz? Gone round to her man laws. No one was to come here. No one. It was to be done only through Liz. I was careful, Joe. I came the back way. Liz slipped out so we can have a talk. She'll be back in half an hour. Now, will you listen to what I have to say? All right. A friend of George's, the one who's been helping him. He brought me a sketch of the place. 
Have a look. There. What do you think? Hey. How did he get it? Copied it. He's on the inside, one of the guards. And he can give us information in his own words that'll make the job safe, fast, and certain. How? Here, look. This is the area of the strong room. Now, there's no need to break through now. He can tell us where to find the special keys to this door. Mm. And for the strong room itself, mm. he can tell us where to find the combination of the day. We had allowed four hours, Joe. But with this help, once you get us inside, it's a walk. I've been timing it. I reckon in only 12 minutes. Mm. If everyone does their bit. Aye, yeah, about that. But the cops come immediately, those alarms go off. That place is alive with alarms. And I can't be absolutely certain. If he can get a plan like this, can he get us a sketch of the alarm system? He's getting it now, Joe. And he's getting you the manufacturer's name. <laughs> well, then there's no problem. I told you we'd fix a coming out present for you. Oh, there's just one point. I have to have your agreement. He wants a share. A fifth. I told him it was a bit steep. For the alarm system, the keys to the security area and the combination? Yeah. It's worth it. There'll be no squeak from the alarms and, and I'll have you in before the guards can blink. Right. We thought of doing it Sunday night, at the end of the shift when the guards are getting a bit careless. Right. That's Liz come back. She said she'd ring first. I'll slip out the back. Well, how'd it go, Max? Uh, same as last time. He stayed in all day. About seven, he went to the pub. Uh, this time, he took home a couple of pies. Uh, do you want it exact? Yeah. CID, DC Maxton. Yes, he's here. It's for you. Dave Brooke? Who is it? It's Harry, Mr. Brooke. That stuff you wanted, the when and the where. Well, go ahead. Oh, I'm not risking it on the phone. Yeah. Can't we meet? Right, uh, same place in half an hour. See ya. You're late, Harry. The bus is Mr. Brook. Can't trust them anymore. What have you got? Well, it's good news for you. It's on your own ground, Mr. Brook. So it should do you a bit of good. It's the big security building on the corner by the bridge. What, North Bridge? That's it. When? This weekend. A weekend's a long time to be hanging around at this time of the year. Can't help you, Mr. Brook. It's the best I can do. Saturday or Sunday? I don't know. You'll just have to watch the place. Can you put me in for a reward? Don't be daft. Rewards are paid when the stuff's taken. This lot's not going to be taken. But if it is... We'll have to see. So, it's the security office in Northbridge Road? Yes, sir. Saturday or Sunday? It's the best he could get, sir. They're a pretty dangerous mob. Now, Sergeant Hillier, what does criminal intelligence have? On the security company, sir. Well, they do hold large sums over the weekend, and at the end of the month, it is about a million. The building's ironclad, alarm systems, security locks, and a strong room as good as any I've seen. Would it take all weekend to do? Frankly, they don't see it being done at all, sir. Joe Brennan has different ideas. I could talk to the director, sir. Not yet. This job isn't ours. What do you mean it isn't ours? The commander's orders, Sergeant. It's a top-value job. I tell the commander and he tells the flying squad. But it's on our own ground, sir. Yes, but even if it was next door to this nick, we still have to pass it on. Well, but cheer up. They may need some local knowledge. Mary? Yes, sir? Ask the commander if I can see him, please. We work ourselves into the ground and this is what we get. They give it to the squad. It's how it works, Dave. I'll tell you how it works. If it comes off, the glory boys will get the credit. If they muff it, we get the blame. That's life, Sergeant. Hello? Hello, Terry. Joe Brennan here. Look, I've been checking these plans. I want the day changed. I want it done on Friday night. Friday? Aye. The job's a simple one, so the sooner the better. I'm tired of being cooped up like this, playing the parole game and staying home at nights. I want to stretch my legs, be free. I want it laid on for doing fast on Friday night, and I want my share and my air tickets and to be out of the country by Saturday morning. Okay? If you say so, Joe. Okay. 
So it's all been passed to the squad, Saturday or Sunday night. And we've been told to get on with our own work. What's top of the frame? Uh, this bloke is doing the bed sitters and rooming flats and seems to know good jewellery from trash. Always leaves the trash. And the Wiggins scuffling pulls and the antique joker. Oh, and the two legal aid forms to be squared up. CID, Sergeant Brooke. Who is it? Sorry, D, Mr Brooke. That job I told you, there's been a change. What kind of change? Oh, I was in the pub dinner time. Ryan was talking with Jim Moody. I managed to catch part of it. It's on for tonight. Are you sure? Yeah, certain. Brennan wants it done tonight, and then he's away. Thanks. They nearly got away with it, Max. It's on for tonight. Why must we always be cooped up like this? Because we're coppers, that's why. What time is it? Just after midnight. Dave? Yeah? Does your snout know what wrong information can do to a copper's gut? Has he ever been crammed in a van on a night like this? Cold? Hungry? Just shut up. Keep your eyes on that building. Central control to Central 3. Central 3. Stand ready. A car with three men has just pulled up near the carpenter's lane entrance. Are they active? Not yet. Sitting watching the place. Waiting. Stay alert. Central control to Central 1. That's our heavy mob. Will you send them in? They're already in. They've taken the place of the security guards. Central control to Central 1. Are you kidding me, Central 1? Central 1. Sorry, I was keeping an eye on something. Keeping an eye on what, Central 1? There's a geezer already in. He's doing the alarm system. Do we take him? No. Let him all walk into the cage. We'll go. We'll have the front door open for the backup. The tip was solid. Lucky for you, Brooke. Or we'd have broken your leg. Would you like to try it? Some other time. Central control to Central 3. Get it moving. That's us. All out. Make for the front door. This way! We are police officers. Drop those guns. The hell I will! Drop that gun, Ryan. That's it. Now, you too, Moody. All right, men. Let's get them. Now, lie on the floor. Hurry it. Arms and legs spread. Dyson, collect the guns. Maxton, Brooke, search them. Yeah. Now, is anybody hurt? No, sir. Good. All clear? Well done. You'd better get downstairs, Dave. Three to be charged. Three? No, Brennan. But Max, he was there. He did the alarms, bridged and cut. I saw them. His work. He must have pushed off when the shooting started. Well, don't look so miserable. The squad is pleased with you. They're giving you one. Moody. But I did arrest Moody. Moody. Smile. Let them think you're happy. <laughs>